Hey, I'm Q RuPaul, and this is Linda, and welcome to Lesson 19 in our series, Spanish for Retirees Living in Mexico. Today we're going to be talking about direct object pronouns. Now you got a brief glimpse of a direct object pronoun in the last lesson, Lesson 18, when I put the phrase, no lo sé, I don't know. The direct object pronoun was the word lo. The direct object pronoun replaces the object in the sentence. So look at the first sentence. I have the suitcases. So you ask yourself, what do I have? The suitcases. So the suitcases, that's the object. In the second sentence, I replaced it. I have them. The word them represents suitcases. That's a direct object pronoun. Let's start by going through the direct object pronouns, and then I'll show you how to use them in sentences. Me means me. Te, you. Lo, la means it, him, or her. Nos, us. Los, las can mean them or you, plural. All right, we're going to be doing our practice sentences utilizing the verb conocer. Remember, you learned that last time. Conocer is to know people, places, and things. It's like saying you're familiar with something or someone. In the last lesson, we made sentences like, Do you know Juan? ¿Conoces a Juan? Now, if we want to answer that question with, Yes, I know him. Him is going to be the direct object pronoun. Si, sí, lo conozco. Now, lo is the direct object pronoun. And like many other things in Spanish, the direct object pronoun is going to agree in number and gender with the object that it's replacing. In this case, it's Juan, who's masculine. So it's going to be lo. So if I want to say, I know her, then I want to change the direct object pronoun to la. Si, sí, la conozco. The challenge to using direct object pronouns correctly is to know where to put them in the sentence. Now, the word order doesn't match between English and Spanish, so it helps to learn a couple rules. So you're going to be putting the direct object pronoun before conjugated verbs, or you have a second option, attached to the infinitive, if there is one. The infinitive is the unconjugated verb, like conocer, saber. Now, sometimes there's not even one in a sentence, like this one. Do you know him? Lo conoces? So you only have one choice. You have to put it before the conjugated verb. Now let's look at a sentence where there is an infinitive. So we have some options where we're going to place the direct object pronoun. Do you want to meet him? If you remember, conocer can also mean to meet someone for the first time. So we can either put it before the conjugated verb and it would become lo quieres conocer or we can attach it to the infinitive unconjugated verb at the end. ¿Quieres conocerlo? Let's change the sentence a little bit and ask, do you want to meet them? And it's a mixed group of men and women. Now, anytime you have a mixed group, you're always going to go with the masculine. So, our sentence options are, ¿Los quieres conocer? Or, ¿Quieres conocerlos? Let's take the same sentence, but suppose that the group is only made up of women. That's going to change our direct object pronoun. ¿Las quieres conocer? Or your other option, ¿Quieres conocerlas? Here's your chance to try translating a few of these on your own. I put five sentences in English on the board. They're all similar, just a slight difference. I also put the direct object pronouns on the bottom of the screen so you don't have to flip back through your notes. If you do want to take a stab at these, go ahead and pause the video now. All right, here are the answers. Do I know you? Te conozco. Do you know me? Me conoces. Do you know him? Lo conoces? Do I know her? La conozco? Do you know them? Mixed group, men and women? Los conoces? Let's go through a few examples that utilize the verb tener, which means to have. Do you have the tickets? Tienes los boletos? I have them. Los tengo. Do you have the suitcases? Tienes las maletas? I have them. Las tengo. If you want to translate the English word it into Spanish, we're going to use the direct object pronoun, but it still needs to agree in number and gender with the object that it's replacing. So if I want to translate, I want to buy it, and I'm talking about bread, which is el pan, a masculine noun, I have two options, lo quiero comprar or quiero comprarlo. See, the direct object pronoun is masculine singular, just like bread is. 
Let's take the same English sentence, but this time the word it is referring to milk, which is a feminine noun in Spanish. That means I'm going to have to change the direct object pronoun in my translations. La quiero comprar. Or I could say, quiero comprarla. Well, that's the end of our lesson. As usual, I encourage you to go out and practice your Spanish as much as possible with anyone who's patient enough to listen to you. Until next time, hasta luego.